recording has started so okay um i'm just going to pin myself up so that um we are side by side okay there we go G'day, welcome back to Brutlosophy, uh, and my name is Tech, as you know, uh, and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm filming on uh, in Perth, uh, uh, the Wajik people. Now today I've got a special treat, a lot of you uh, have asked for him to come back. This is Australian podiatrist Anthony Cox. G'day Anthony, how are you going? Really good Tech, really good, yeah, great to see you again. And you, terrific. Um, the interview with you last time had a great response and people, I, I guess, are getting into boots and uh, their feet are hurting. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. So um, uh, it's morning for me and we have a three hour difference. So my cup of coffee, cheers. Yep, cheers to you. I'm on, it's just water. This is uh, <laughs> a nice little uh, novelty that was left over from Oktoberfest not so long about, ago. So, yeah. Ah, interesting. Okay, mm. so that's that's a very mm. big glass. Are you sure that's water? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, mate. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a bit early. It's only eleven here, so a bit early. Five yeah. o'clock somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely right. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a three-hour uh, time difference for people who don't know. So it's eight o'clock for me uh, here in Perth. Now, you've actually had a few life changes since we spoke. You've moved states. Tell us about I that. Had I have, I have tech, yeah, yeah. Um, just the way uh, um, I suppose life worked out. Um, we uh, had a change of state, so now we live in uh, the northwest part of Tasmania, which is uh, a very southern state. Um, those who don't know, um, so we're right down at about uh, 42 degrees, um, and uh, yeah, we've we've moved down here. Um, uh, my partner had a job that she came to down here and I've subsequently um, got a new role in, in work down here starting in April and that's gone really well. And yeah, we've uh, recently um, bought a little farm and uh, so yeah, we're, we're really liking it. Um, the, uh, the, the food and, um, and the, the um, I suppose it's very rural where we are, but there's a lot of um, uh, local products that we're able to enjoy and hopefully we'll be producing soon as well. So, um, yeah, right. uh, yeah. And as ever, of course, the boot culture is pretty strong down here. Um, more for boot wear. Uh, um, I get a few comments about my boots down here because it's, uh, there's a lot of work boots going around, what we call in Australia work boots. But, yeah, they see the uh, um, different... Um, uh, um, welts and uh and, uh, and start asking a few questions so it's good yeah it's great That's terrific yeah, yeah terrific yeah. and for the americans um uh, tasmania is a lot colder than where you came from in brisbane so the boots probably work out quite well eh? yeah yeah certainly yeah it's um it's very easy to keep the rotation going um and uh i work in an office so um i and i i commute on an e-bike uh, when I don't get the bus, so so I'll I'll be able to wear boots year round here. Whereas, while it's possible in Queensland, it it probably through those hotter months it's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. It's yeah. good. Uh, I get it get through. You know, um, Thursdays on Thursdays, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Now we've been in touch, and I know that since I last spoke to you, you've got a new pair of several new pairs of boots. I think. Do you want to uh, tell us what yeah, you've got? Yeah. Three, three, um, three. three tech, yeah. So um, uh, uh, last year I I um pulled the pin and um, August August of last year I uh, I um put in an order um with the guys over in Colombia for the um, Bordon Tucano, which right. I have here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very. Is happy that the wet flesh? Yes. Um, uh, the wet yes, sway. It, yeah, yeah, it's a very. I wouldn't call it suede, but well, maybe it is. The nap, the nap was very small, or well, not a great right. height, but um, very, very good boot, very rugged boot, um, very comfortable right from the start. Uh, the liaison with um, um, 
the guys over there was fantastic. They got back to me promptly. I was a bit nervous about, you know, sizing, etc. And then um, and I did email them a couple of times because while I ordered, ordered them in August, um, I didn't see them until March this year. So that's sort of wow. seven and a half months. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's worth the wait. Um, I think you've got a pair of these. I, I, I do. I have several. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got yeah, a, so, I've got the Chelsea boots and two pairs of Tucanas. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the 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 quality and the workmanship is outstanding. I think the stitching is very very good. I personally like the pull tab. I think yeah. That's not everyone's cup of tea, but I like it. Um, and yeah, it came with good laces and lovely presentation. You know, yeah. uh, with the box, etc. And the little. I think they give you a little sample of the little key yeah. ring or something yeah it's a very nice touch and my I only think the, my, key, the key ring the key ring is made from excess uh midsole leather i think that's it that's it yeah. yeah yeah my only my only criticism with this and it's not really a criticism is that it's got a little three-quarter length um um uh insole i suppose which which is very thin it's that yeah. lining yeah. leather and so when you pull your foot out it, it does lift at that front it lifts edge. It. Yeah. Yeah, but that's I mean that's it's not a problem once it's on. When you know, while it lifts it up when you pull your foot out, when you push your foot in it, it foot flattens it again. So yeah. it's it's yeah. it's neither neither here nor there. And yeah. yeah, just lovely, um very rugged um outsole, etc. And yeah, yeah, I like I do like wearing these a lot. Yeah. Interesting feel um uh, across the sort of top of the boot here mm -hmm. when you put it on for me, it's sort of not, I wouldn't call it pressure, but it was quite snug here for right. me. Um, but yeah, it's 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 never been anything that is called rubbing or blisters or anything. It's right. been fine. So yeah. Did you like find it. the width all right? Because it yeah. it is it is quite a wide boot boot across the ball, isn't it? Absolutely, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I have got quite a wide forefoot, um, and so yeah, it certainly wasn't tight. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's yep. good. Yeah. But yeah, very happy. Um, yeah, very happy. One of the little speed hooks um, bent out, and through the repetition of bending it out and bending it right. back, it, it it failed. But it's it's inconsequential. I'll get that fixed at some point. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, very good. Yeah. Good in the the damp down down here. It's not unusual to walk through puddles or wet grass, and you actually can end up somewhere with a wet boot. But with the welting, you know, we all know that those sort of amounts of water aren't an issue because yeah it just it doesn't get in and um no they've been great very good very good yeah, yeah. um prior uh while i was waiting for those um just before i think it was in december parkhurst did a run on the then new 602m last yeah and so i i got a pair of um the allens uh -huh. this pair here uh -huh. yeah so is that your in, first Parkhurst? No, no, I had a pair of Allens on the 602 oh, last. Old 602. The uh, ru Rust Waxies, yeah. Um, so these these were a 10. Uh, this is Natural Double Shot, which is a beautiful leather, you know, really yeah. nice. I like it. Um, nice little day-night sole. Yeah. Um, very, very capable. Again, I tend to wear this in more smart casual or yeah. casual lines but but i'm sure if i was stomping around the paddocks it wouldn't it would yeah. be fine as well totally yeah um yeah very happy with these as well um a lot quicker process uh in terms of ordering with sure. those ones hmm. um so being your second parkhurst with the with the revised last do you prefer the hmm. 602 or the 602 m uh good good question um I think I think me personally I prefer the 602. Yeah. Um nothing wrong with the 602M but but um either or pretty good but but if given a choice uh I think the 602 um and as you know you know there's a lot of drops with some really interesting leathers and things and I I have I probably have hesitated a bit because it was only on the 602 or the the newer last um uh because I do like Oh, sorry, the 602M, because I do yeah. prefer the 602. Um, but you know, what, um, why? Oh, I just think, well, it I think it's wider in the forefoot. Yeah. Um, by just a millimeter or two. And um, you know, too wide's obviously better than too narrow, but 
I just that that snug feeling of the six oh two for me is one I prefer. That's that's the only thing, um, and it's very much a subjective yeah, feeling. It you know, it's yeah. it's not yeah. it's not nothing wrong with it. It's not. I don't think it's disproportionate. You know, it's too wide for everybody or anything like that. Um, yeah. yeah. What about you? What do you prefer? I I I think you should try the six one eight because that's my new favorite with them. I think. Yeah. Uh, right. The, the stitch okay. down. Yeah. I. You know how yeah. the 602 being a combination last is quite grippy in the back and then quite roomy in front. Yeah. The 618 I find even more that that the heel isn't isn't any narrower but they've squeezed the waist a, a little bit I think so yeah. that you get that Alden sort of support in your in your arch and that yeah. the ball is is I feel uh, Andrew says it isn't but I feel that the ball is a bit wider before it comes into it to the arm and toe. Yeah. Yeah, and right. that okay. to me now is my favorite Parkhurst last, the 618. So, um, yeah, they get put some money aside. I think you should try one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's good food for thought there. Yeah, just definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I will. I will. And um, then you've mm. got an MP, <laughs> my favorite boot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somewhat inspired by yourself and the, the term <laughs> the grail boot. Um, there was a mid-year sale uh, reduction, and I, I looked and looked and hummed and hard, and uh, I thought, well, yeah, I'll, I think at least when it's a reduced price, uh, yeah. I, I give it a go. Um, went with the MP Sherman toe cap, yeah, um, in British tan, yeah, uh, which I love. It's absolutely beautiful leather, and it's just, it's just um, patinering up nicely. Um, yeah, over engineered to hell these boots, man. They're yeah. strong, you know, um, and just so well um, made. Um, and I got the mini lug, which yeah. I like. Yeah, great uh, grip. Very, very good grip and not yeah. as chunky as, say, the Bordons with the really full lug. Yeah. Um, I like the height of this, you know, it's just that ever so slightly higher, yeah. you know, and yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. Just really, really happy. Um, but with the, it was interesting because w when I was waiting on the Bordons, which was quite a wait, I thought, oh no, everyone says just wait, they'll come. And I did shoot off two inquiry emails to say how they're going, and I was reassured, oh they're in this stage or they're in that stage. But with this one, I didn't have any e email interaction. I just did the sizing based on advice from yourself and others. Uh, so this is actually a nine and a half double E, um, so down a size but wider. Um, and the waiting period um, was a bit shorter than the Bourdon, but I was I was way more nervous for some reason. Tech, you know, I was I was like a bag of cats at a greyhound meeting. You know, it was pretty um, stressful given the money. I thought, oh, what am I going to? Anyway, they turned up a bit sooner than expected, which was a lovely surprise. And yeah, very very happy. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they get a lot of use. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I often wear them again to work or I don't hesitate. You know, I've mown lawns in these and I've yeah. cl climbed in and out of machinery and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. I think they're made to be used and that's something we might talk about later. Um, I just find that, um, well, you know, to wear, to look good and dress and the whole fashion aspect is good. I think, you know, these, these boots were made... Um, and the, the the whole genre of boots, you know, the the essentially handmade or or traditionally made boots with the proper welting and recraftable features, you know, they. I think I think in in times gone by, you know, um, people would have had one pair, and 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 worn them for for several years, and then but that's why they look so good, you yeah. know, because they're just, you know, that patina and and the creasing yeah. and everything um and so you know it's easy to forget that um these days I, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with foldable knives you know little pocket knives yeah. and um some of the great presenters on youtube you know would give these incredibly thorough um uh, accounts of the, the type of blade and the blade steel and the features and the fittings and everything you know you could just watch it and then and then Occasionally, they'd mention what they're using them for, you know, and and it seemed to be mostly it was for opening boxes from Amazon. Um, so, so you know, this is this is to my point where, um, 
uh, you know, if something's built to last and everything. I like, me personally, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but, you know, to use them um, and then treat them well, like condition them, clean them. Yeah. And and they give you years of service, which is just fantastic. Yeah. But, yeah, love the whites. Really happy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether I'll be getting multiple pairs of those, given <laughs> given the cost. But, but look, yeah, look overall, yeah, I think I think um, one of your pairs um, they ca- they come with these rawhide really thick laces, um, yeah. which I've swapped out. You probably noticed there. That's yeah. that's a pair of yeah. red, red wing red wing laces. I really like those red wing laces. But, yeah. Um, yeah, they weren't they weren't for me, but. Um, Again, it goes to that real rugged side. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah very and I think happy it depends. It. it depends on the leather. I think if you've got a chrome Excel, you you probably want a <laughs> wax cotton of some kind, don't you? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. A bit more Terrific. sort of dainty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, shall we jump into it? I've got a whole lot of questions from you. Um, a lot okay. of people from Instagram uh, put questions yeah. in. My wife has a yeah. question, so she'll she'll appear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely right. yeah far away yeah this should but be interesting. Go, mate. okay yeah. so um i'm doing these in order as the way they put in so the first one is from david palmer 9014 it's a mm. double barrel mm. question mm. are minimalist and barefoot shoes good for you or even safe i was always told arch support is critically important that's part one mm. part two also i have foot pain i'm told is either chronic bursitis or possibly a tailor's bunion, and you might have to explain those terms. Hmm. Why is it that wearing hoka sneakers with lots of cushion hurts my foot more than when I wear my regular pumas with very little cushion? Hmm. Right, okay. Uh, so I'll address that first part of the, the first, question one first. Um, um, in terms of minimalist shoes, um, look, it, look, whether they're good for you, it depends. Um, they will suit some people, uh, and um, if they suit them, that's great. That's fine for whatever they're doing in them. Um, that that's fine. Um, uh, however, the the principles of good footwear don't marry up to that from a p- podiatry or foot health point of view. Um, however, I would if 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 someone was uninjured and doing what they want to do in a barefoot shoot, well, yeah, go for gold. You know. Um, as ter- I, terms of arch support being critical, um, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, um, you know, certainly through life, our arch will probably drop a bit if it's high to start off with. Um, so at various times through life, you may need various levels of arch support, but um, it's, it, it's certainly, I wouldn't put it in the critical category. Um, so uh, where it will again. It will be good for some people, but not necessarily for others. Um, and when I say the arch will will drop or or be strained in some form, then it's often the speed with which it with which that happens, or the degree which which it happens. So, um, you know, you you may jump off something, and if you don't have much arch support, you may strain the arch, or or you may go for a long walk after not being conditioned to that and strain the arch. But um, you know, the variables there are force and time. So it just depends, but but you know, there's there's literally millions of people all around the world who have tremendously flat feet and have never used arch support, and they go about their lives perfectly fine. Um, and 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 arch support is can be you know it's a fairly loose term, but yeah, it can be it can be extrapolated out to well, what arch of the foot are you supporting? Because there's three, so you know it just depends. But but yeah, I wouldn't hang my hat on that. And if you wanted to experiment or transition to minimalist shoes. Yeah, feel free. Right. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. To, to the second part there regarding, I think it was bursitis or Taylor's bunion. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So yeah, just to explain, um, a Taylor's bunion um, or bunion uh, is often a term used about a um, a reddening of this on the skin due to a, a, like a bump of, on the on the the front of the foot. So traditionally, it would be. Um, just use this uh, shoe tree to show you, but yeah, this this being the the big toe side, normally it would be like a bump out here, right? Yeah. Uh, um, however, a tailor's bunion is smaller, and it's on this side, so ah. the outside of the foot. 
just just behind the, the little toe. And then so so a tailor's bunion is the name for the or a tailor's yeah bunion is the name for the deformity, meaning that the metatarsal goes out and the toe comes in, so you have a right. bump. But the bursitis is the reddening of of uh -huh. the skin and then the subcutaneous tissue. So we have bursts all over our body. They're very important for shock absorption and friction reduction. And, and then, so similarly, a bunion a bunion really is the redden bit, but the deformity is is another name. And then here, tailors. Yeah. So so technically, yes, it, they're sort of one in the same. You can't have well, you can't have one without the other, but they're linked. And then in terms of the shoes, with that in 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 regards to um, cushioning. Um, I'm not sure that cushioning may be the issue there. It might be the actual volume in the toe box. So if 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 it, it if it's being just compressed a little bit, it could be irritating it. Or if if with the ultra cushioning poker shoes, it could be moving a bit more. Right. Not, necess so you're not necessarily. Out. Yeah, not necessarily <laughs> sideways either. It could be sort of rolling or or sliding. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and and I think if you have that deformity, then it's a matter of finding whatever shoe works for you, um, and whether that's an element of cushioning or an element of accommodation in the toe box. Um, yeah, it just depends. It would be a bit of trial and error. Um, there are surgical options for that, although generally that's sort of steered away from um, uh, because of risk. And if you can sort it out with footwear, it's a much better way to go um but yeah it, it may be possible um so yeah uh um that's how i'd address that one it's right. probably more the volume and some people some people may need so the width part of a size so you can have a you know we've addressed this i was just mentioned there i had a nine and a half double e so the e part so you may look that all right the hokers might be a d but right. your pumas are actually an e or even a double right. e Right. Um, and that means that you might, in other <clears throat> shoes, look for that extra width, and that right. that could be quite a problem. But thankfully, the internet has made that job a lot easier. Yeah. Right. 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 I've got a follow up question on the arch support. Um, mm. I mean, there's there's arch in boots. There's arch support and there's arch support. Like there's some mm. some of them is very light, which basically mm. I guess stops you flattening during the day, so you're not tired at mm. the end of the day. Mm. And then, mm. like you know, the the Pacific Northwest boots are very aggressive. Mm arch support, mm, mm. which actually can hurt me sometimes mm, when it's mm, too aggressive. Mm. Um, so in terms of arch support, mm. is there a good and a bad, or is that, again, dependent on you? I, I'd have to say it depends on you, because because um, if you start off with a very, very flat foot and have, you know, the, the, it's very fine-tuned, the amount of arch support that might work for you. Um, and you know you could have a very high arch foot and what regardless of the arch support they put in the shoe it'll never actually support the arch because the architecture of the foot is such and then there's also uh, the, the amount of actual um, physical activity that the foot's doing and and um, load carrying uh, you know within the body it's 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 it, there's a lot of variables in there I think tech and and it just it just it depends on on your foot, how it starts and the stage of life. There's a lot of variables, right? And it's just it's just a matter of finding what works for you. Sometimes, as you probably know, you could have, say, a blister or an irritation or just a pain, and then after four, six, eight, ten wears, that just disappears, you know. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it doesn't. So you think, well, all right, I don't like that that chew anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah, that's the way you have to deal with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to get rid of my thoroughbred mock toes for exactly that reason. I could not get rid of a blister in the heel, like forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> there you go. There you go, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I reckon you'll find uh, arch support coming up in a few of these, but <laughs> mm. I'll go on okay. to the next question. Sure. Now, this, this one's from River Power 9402 Is there a uh, wise boot or shoe selection to slow down the progress of a bunion? I think bunions and arch support are going to be common. Can the thick leather of a big boot prevent the progress of a bunion? Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, did you say a wise, a wise? Yes, I, I think what he means shoe. is 
is there a good boot or a good shoe selection to to slow down the progress of a bunion? I'm just okay. I'm just wondering whether that might be a typo, whether it's wide. Ah, okay, yes, possibly. Is yep. it, it possibly? Uh, yep. Well, either way, um, it's sort of we, we can work with both there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, well, look, the, the the short answer is no. If 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 a bunion is going to form, it will form. Yeah, uh, the forces in the foot that form a bunion are very high, and and basically nothing will stop that. Um, so uh, the 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 strong leather of a of a of a shoe or any other little uh, props or splints or um, wedging and stuff, it, it it may make it more comfortable or it may reduce the pain, but that that um, again the deformity. Uh, and just to recap, that's if this was a foot, it's it's sort of where behind the big toe, where the metatarsal goes out and the toe goes in, so you have a bump. And that, um, yeah, if that's going to form, it'll form. I think there's there's a lot of um, it's it's hereditary. Yeah, uh, okay. bunions. Yeah, it's 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 nothing to do with footwear. I think um, people are vain, but they're not stupid, you know. So if they um, get um, a shoe that's too tight that will push their toe that far, they, they might, you know, you just can't wear it. Um, and it's 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 mechanically different. It actually has to do with how the back of the foot functions and things like that. Um, and there was a study years and years ago where uh, they they uh, found a tribe um, of a population uh, that had never ever shoes ever. And the incidence of bunions was the same as the rest. Of it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was quite a famous study. Several it was back way back years ago. Yeah. So, I, I, so I, I'd always I, I'd always thought bunions were developed because you're trying to push your toes into pointy shoes. No, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And if you look at look at a pointy shoe, um, you find that the toe. The shoe can be pointy, but then quite long, and the toes aren't in the same profile as the shoe. They sort of stop yeah. a bit. Yeah. And the toe yeah. is, yeah, a bit, a bit yeah. Yeah. Um, longer. Mm. And as an aside, um, mm. my preference for the Parker 618 is precisely that. The act, it, it's a very pointy toe, but but it's actually a longer shoe. So your your yeah. feet are not, you there know, you go. You yeah. know, malleable. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So now this is a follow-up uh, bunion question from my wife, Amanda. <laughs> mm. uh, why are women more prone to oh. developing bunions? So she thinks. Mm. Um, what truth is there in non-surgical bunion correction? For example, massaging the muscles between the big and the next toe to release the pullover, uh, mm. inserting toe separators, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, okay, well, I sort of addressed that just now in that all those splints and props and braces and wedges etc i've never seen them work um i uh as i said the forces that cause a bunion are quite high um and they may make it more comfortable for someone and that's great but i've, I've never seen a bunion reverse that way ah. yeah and to address the uh sex difference so women get more bunions than men. That's true. Just from memory, I think the incidence is about double women to wow. men. So maybe 23, 24% for women and maybe 11 or 12% for men. That right. may, may have to be corrected on that. But it is certainly more in women, that's for sure. And uh, I think that would have to do with the, their soft tissue, their, their connective tissue. Yeah. As so opposed in, to the shoe, like oh, high yeah. heels. Okay. No, 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 no. It's to do with their their tissue and how much their joints move. Because okay. in general, in general, women are more flexible than men um, because they have babies. Right. Yeah. And right. and so uh, connective tissue, and of course, as we age, we all get exposed. We all have some degradation of our collagen and other things in our connective tissue, and so that would <clears throat> then mean that. Um, yeah, if you're prone to it, and again, I believe it's more the hereditary, then a man might develop a bunion in our right. older age, and, and then right. yeah, but that's that's why women get it more. Yeah, so, I, I don't. You know, go ahead. With, what you were explaining about the bunion was the hmm. the the growth outwards of the joint and the 
and the mm. inwards of the toe mm. is is which is the which is the most cause is it too much pushing in or is there a natural growth coming out um I, th I, I think it's it's a combination. I think, well, the primary cause, I think, is the metatarsal going out and then the toe comes in. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So okay. it's the metatarsal out and the toe in, uh, which makes the bump and, okay. and the wide forefoot. The process inside the joint is one of arthritis. So yeah, generally yeah. it's it, it's osteoarthritis. It can be other forms of arthritis. And if that's very bad, then you can have extra bone laid down and bumps uh, right. on the side of the foot or even on top of the foot. Yeah. So it, it is a, the the biggest thing with arthritis is is the the deformation of the joint. So the joint moves to a position that's um, not sort of nor normal. So right, the, right. Yeah. So it's it's yeah it, it it's part force, part genetics, part connective tissue and things like that yeah um, right mm. interesting okay that's terrific i'll go on to the next one mm. uh, this is from ml8067 uh he or she is squeezing it in i think there are three questions here <laughs> okay um, yeah this is good. <laughs> how how did how different last affect our feet i think he said can you explain how different last affect our, our feet Mm. And then he says, I'll second that arch support topic, which we've already talked about. Mm. So mm. how do different lasts affect our feet? Number two, how does heel height affect the foot? And number mm. three, uh, aging and traditional boots versus softer, squishy boot shoes. I mm. guess what he's saying is which is better and mm. which is worse. Mm. So how okay. different lasts? Yeah, well, I suppose... Um, just a quick recap on lasts for anyone who's playing catch up at home but it, you know um, a last is is actually not unlike this this is a shoe tree but for instance this is molded out of wood in the approximate shape and proportions of a foot and by changing the dimensions of this you can change the parameters of the shoe uh, from the inside um, and the outside and then um, this essentially represents a, a, a standard foot for the size that you're making um, so I suppose different lasts, it will ultimately it will affect fit. So it, it will mean how it feels on your foot and it will have um, a match up to your foot that will be different for different lasts. So we mentioned before um, the 602, how it's quite broad at the forefoot and then it tapers down at the heel. So some people's feet are, quite, are like that. You know, they can be really quite forefoot and then, you know, it's a real triangle if you do look at the footprint. Um, so, so then you marry up the last to that um, uh, foot and, and the variance thereof. Um, it's finding a match, I guess. And then in terms of affecting it, it it's just that a good one will be good uh, in terms of comfort and less irritation. And then the one that's not right for you will cause, you know, less com will be more less comfortable and may potentially cause irritation. Um, and so, you know, it's the onus, is, I suppose, is on two producers to have something that is quite generic that won't harm many people because if it harms enough people, they won't sell shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah but the different lasts will have different features. Um, and then, you know, to make in the in moving on to the medical sort of footwear field, the last is actually made from a mold of that person's foot. So that is true customization. Um, and as a, a mold being a three dimensional copy of that person's foot, you know, you can't get more accurate than that. Um, whereas, you know, there's various measurements you can do, but ultimately they're sort of two dimensional. Um, and so they, they um, have to convert that to marry up to the last that may, might suit. Yeah, I think that addresses that part of the question pretty well. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, yeah. It, the, the short answer is it affects fit. Yeah, and and I guess that's why. I mean, Truman boots, for example. I've got four pairs of them. Mm. They fit, but mm. I I never forget I'm wearing them. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. to me, that's mm. not a comfortable last, as opposed to my two most comfortable lasts come from Parkhurst and Grant Stone. So that's why mm. it is. It, mm. I, I guess that last just doesn't suit my foot. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. tell Dale. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think you're... he just squeezes everything on his foot. It doesn't matter what last it is, you know. <laughs> I hope you're watching, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah. The, the next the next part of the question is how does heel height affect the foot? Oh, yeah. So um, heel height um, is an important aspect of, of good footwear. And and um, what we as as, as or me as a podiatrist would think of, of good footwear is that you would have a small heel height, a difference from the heel to the ball of the foot. And the best analogy I can give you here, Tech, is that is that if you imagine a lady's high heel, um, she's wearing the high heel, standing on it, or or even with it on the foot, um, it will when the heel is up, the arch is up. It's just a natural mechanism, a bit like suspension on a vehicle. Where if you move this, that moves. So, right. and any anyone can see this. If they go through the motion of like going up on tippy toe, generally their arch will come up. So what that means is that in the it's sort of like a a sneaky way of giving arch support because you you put a heel on, um, and I'm not talking much here, but just a little right. bit because if you if you do go too high, that sets off things further up. What we call the kinetic yeah. chain, and it'll be. That means your ankles bent more, so therefore your knee bends more and your hips bend more, and that then the reason becomes fashion and how your calves look or your you know hips and everything. So um, it, it, yeah, it, but that's essentially it. it, it and and the heel height, uh, a small heel of four or eight or ten millimeters is what I would consider good. Um, some shoes are completely flat, and that's that's fine. Um, however. Um, if if you have problems, musculoskeletal problems, comfort problems, even up as far as back pain or tiredness at the end of the day, you might find that wearing a, a shoe with a heel helps that. Or conversely, it, it may not be right okay. right for you. But in general, a, heel, a small heel is considered good. Um, I don't quote me on this, but I believe it was invented by the Romans. They found their armies could march further with a sandal with a heel. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Right. What did the Romans ever do for us, Tech? <laughs> Not good shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last part, I, mm. I, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question, but what he says mm. is, aging and traditional boots versus mm. softer, squishy boots. I think what he means is which is better, like heritage yeah. or squish. Oh yeah, well, I think it depends on on the use, um, and we all know that. Uh, the traditional boots tend to last a lot longer and are recraftable. Just so, um, you know, I make a lot of comparisons to vehicles, but, but like it's like we're using a truck tyre versus a, a racing slick. The truck tyre may be firmer and more rugged, but it'll last for 10 years or 20 years, whereas a racing slick is softer and squishier, but it'll wear quicker. Right. Uh, how, how that is attached to the shoe means that it is usually either melted on or glued on, and that, that can fail a lot easier than, say, a, a welt, a proper welt. Right. Right. So, yeah, there's those factors. I, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It depends on use. Um, right. You know, I certainly wouldn't want to run a marathon in my whites, even though they're great. Um, <laughs> and I probably wouldn't chop wood in a pair of sneakers, you know, yeah. soft and squishy yeah. sneakers. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, there's a few variables there. There's no real okay. right answer. Just whatever suits you. Okay, I've got a um, a weird situation that's sort of in that squishy category question. Mm. Um, I'm off to uh, New Zealand in in uh, January for for a mm. ten day holiday in Auckland, mm. and I'm, mm. we're going to walk a lot, my wife and I. Mm. So I've been trying different pairs of boots to see which ones wear, and um, I haven't got it with me, but. I recently bought a pair of Craft and Glory hike boots, mm -hmm, which have mm -hmm. a, a bit of volume in the toe. Mm. This is not them, but um, mm. this is a mm. Zephyr boot. But mm. the hike boots had a bit of volume in the toe. So what I did was I put a, a squishy sort of pharmacies mm. uh, in, insert into them. Mm -hmm. And what I found was because it's squishy, my foot got a lot more tired walking than if, if it was mm. on, the, on the leather. Mm. And I, I, you know, in my untutored thinking, I'm thinking, I think that's because when I'm walking on uneven ground, my toes are trying to grapple mm. and they're squishing rather than being stable. Is that is that right? Oh, that's definitely a thing. 
Absolutely. Oh, no. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, the foot, the foot, uh, it will, it will try and stabilize and, um, and aim for efficiency in gait. And, and so if, if something is, is too squishy, then yeah, it will, um, uh, yeah. I suppose try and stabilize by, by moving and the toes gripping, etc. Um, you know, a good example here is, is yoga mats. So, you know, yo yoga, as you know, is, is about um, balance and strength and stretching and uh, has tremendous benefits for people. But the, the natural thing we think, oh, I'm getting a yoga mat. I'll get a soft, squishy one. Yeah. Yeah. So you try doing the balance exercises on the <laughs> soft, squishy one versus the really thin one. And yeah. I think you'll swap to your thin one pretty smart. OK, so the next question is from Flower. P H L O W U R. <laughs> um, so again, it's a, a, a kind of double bri double barrel question. Is it better to wear? I'll ask you in two parts. Okay. So the first part is, is it better to wear a boot with a hard sole or squishy sole when considering foot health support? Actually, we've answered that question. So I'll, mm. I'll ask the next one as well. It seems rare to see modern day work or hiking boots made with a full leather sole. Is this just cost cutting, or does it provide better support? Uh, to your foot and to use synthetics? Um, I think it is cost cutting. I really do. Um, because as we know, the um, full leather sole and the uh, adhesion or the, or the welting technique takes, it's more labor intensive, um, more materials and everything like that. that. That would be one aspect of it. And I suppose a lot of the, the really high end hiking boots um, won't use those uh, techniques um, and the the outsole. I presume, you know, you know, when we talk about the, the sole, as you know, we've got the you know the insole, the midsole, and the outsole. But but for today's conversation, we'll refer to the outsole. And you know, rubber can be very good. Uh, it can be very grippy, quite cushioning, quite resistant for uh, the, you know wet and and things like that. So um, yeah, I, I, I suppose it. Yeah, it, it it seems just to be the way it's gone in terms of the market. Um, you know, there are high end hiking boots um, <clears throat> that that are just as expensive as as the um, the boots we are sort of refer to most. You know, the welted boots. But yeah, um, it depends. You know, I mean, again, if you're going up Everest or you just you know doing the Milford track or something in New Zealand. But yeah, it just depends. A good, it, it, this reminds me actually of um, the most recent Alone Australia. I'm not sure if you watched that. Um, no, I haven't. No. Yeah, so Alone Australia, which was actually done in New Zealand. And one of the, <clears throat> one of the participants in there, his boots failed. Um, yeah, in the, in the, in the show. Um, as, in, and, as in fell apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the outsoles came off. Yeah. Right. And um, and it was obviously a great disappointment to him. It um, it didn't it wasn't the primary reason why he had to leave, but um, you know obviously it was a problem, and he made um quite a really a really good effort. I thought at repairing it given the resources he had. Um, but he tried to anticipate this um by having his boots resold <clears throat> some weeks or months before, and of course that was a gluing process. Uh, not, not a stitching process. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, a, a glue potentially will fail before a stitch, although it depends on the, the abuse it gets. Uh, but that was in New Zealand's very wet environment. And, right. you know, uh, yeah, lots of, they were under a fair bit of pressure. But, um, right. yeah, that was in that hiking boot type family. Um, right, right. right. Mm. OK, so um, <clears throat> next uh, question comes from our friend Dale. <laughs> oh, I'm Dale's great. Leatherworks. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Dale. <laughs> he says, <laughs> so he says, um, can you maybe explain how weight loss or weight gain can affect a foot size for fit purposes? Uh, also, why are we boot addicts cursed with only two feet when we require 50 to put pr proper patina <laughs> on our boots? <laughs> <laughs> Great questions. Great <laughs> questions. Oh dear. Um, regarding the weight loss, um, 
um, topic. Yeah, and I see that um, there was a great video, Dale, you made where you were, I think it was a pair of Grant Stone field boots up at this incredible incline. Um, and as you were hiking, you were filming and I really enjoyed that one. You touched on a lot of topics about, you know, the intake versus output. It was really, really great video. But yeah, look, I think it's a thing. I think um, there's certainly, uh, you know, weight loss is often about fat reduction and to some degree muscle mass reduction, um, <clears throat> depending on how far you go. And I think, I don't think your feet will shrink enormously, but they potentially could go down half a size or a size, depending on the shoe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But oh um, my God, he's going to have to throw away all his Trumans. No, <laughs> hopefully not. Um, he might be moving to different thickness of sock, uh, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I have, I have seen it once or twice, but I, we, we, you know, um, I think we see more problems of a foot getting bigger through life and that's not necessarily with weight gain. It's just that the foot generally tends to flatten and widen as we get older. Um, but it's, it's, it's possible, um, but rare. Um, and hopefully your collection is safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, he, or he'll have to stop. He'll have to stop losing weight. Or, yeah. or maybe he might have to go around the round earth, not the flat earth. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, all right, we'll move on. Uh, so the oh, next oh, question. He mentioned, uh, just, go on. He mentioned. He mentioned about not having fifty pairs. Um, of feet. Well, uh, Dale, I totally endorse the human centipede. I just, I think it's a great idea that if for, for one day a week we could all have uh, suddenly, uh, you know, clip on or attach <laughs> 50 pairs of feet and we can do a whole lot of wear in like one hike. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Um, but yeah, certainly, um, you know, going back to my uh, comments earlier about using your boots to get that patina. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, I suppose, dare I say it, limiting your rotation so that they get that wear and that exposure to, uh, you know, the heat of your foot, the elements, you know, the conditioning and the everything else that, um, yeah, makes that leather look lovely. But, yeah, good point. It'd be great, <laughs> wouldn't it, mate? I Unfortunately, I can never develop good patina. I mean, that's just too much to rotate, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, I'll go on to the next one. Um, Joey D4570. There's a lot of buzz around the 55 last currently with heritage and work boots. From a foot doctor's perspective, is that last healthy long term for feet? Seems like the human foot's arch during our barefoot era was meant to absorb shock when walking and running. Would a high arch boot or shoe take away the foot's natural shock absorption mechanism? And this is one of the last that I asked you earlier that I, it can be quite aggressive and really, mm. you know, digs into my to my arch. So I guess mm. what he's saying is, you know, we were barefoot once and you mm. know, presumably we were designed that way to to be shock absorbing. Mm. Doesn't a high arch boot take away that natural shock absorption? Um. Well, I, no, I wouldn't think so. Um, the thing is that um, the rolling of the foot and the, the sort of the, the dropping of the arch each step as the foot loads is only one part of shock absorption that we've got in our lower limb. So there's there's five major elements that go into shock absorption. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't, I don't think it would, make the foot weak um certainly when we talk about custom prescribed orthotics which i've had a lot to do with you know many years of experience with that um you know sometimes we would make them out of quite firm materials and and the studies around those um showed that it actually makes foot muscles stronger there's three three studies and two two of them showed that it made your foot stronger in terms of the muscle strength um and I, I don't think it's sort of it's not a splinting that makes something weak um and i don't think it would harm you um sort of internally potentially you could get blisters or irritation like we touched on before but i don't think it would, it would um sort of weaken your foot to use that term i think i think he's sort of going on about that and that yeah. natural 
natural yes we we did we but we all when we when we when we didn't have shoes or footwear or supports or anything we didn't we didn't walk on concrete or bitumen or hard surfaces we were you know in in you know on grass and forest floors and things like that so um it's not an automatic association that um to go back to that natural is yeah. necessarily yeah. better yeah we did yeah. speak about that i think last time yes Tech, yeah. yeah yeah so i yeah. think that addresses that one yeah okay terrific uh next one john mates mm. i'm curious what you anthony think about mm. boots for any specific boot, uh, foot conditions I'm particularly mm. interested in Morton's neuroma. Again, you'll have mm -hmm. to explain that. Mm. Uh, but in general as well, if boots are particularly good for certain conditions. I um, think what he's hoping for you is to say yes, so he can buy more boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, again, it comes down to fit. And certainly the, the biggest sort of harm, I suppose, you could do is an ill-fitting boot. And then um, <clears throat> with regard to Morton's neuroma, so I'll just explain that. So... Uh, a neuroma is is thickening of a nerve, so a nerve is like a um, say like a, a shoestring um, type of structure, uh, you know, all through our body, and just the certain ones in the forefoot, the front of the foot, can become irritated where it splits, so that the nerves split like branches on a tree, and where they where it splits at that junction, it sometimes can get like a little ball. So, so to use an analogy, it'd be like a a dress shoelace and then something the size of a pea and then the shoelace again so and then when your foot moves through walking that that little pea gets irritated and that causes pain um and that particular condition is always or generally associated with a form of bursitis like we talked about before ah, which is the okay. fluid sack yeah so the bigger the first advice we give about morton's neuroma with regard to footwear is width so four foot width because of the the metatarsal heads are all lined up in a row. And if they're ever so slightly closer together, you're going to irritate that nerve more. So by by just compressing the front of the foot, you know, um, you know, in sort of this analogy, if you sort of squeeze that, you, you can you can almost trigger if you've got a big neuroma, you you squeeze that, you'll trigger the pain and shoot right. forward to the toe. So um yeah, the biggest thing is width, and that goes back to that. Maybe an uh, E, a double E, a four E, you know, I'd say. And then also some cushioning because you have that bursitis associated right. with it. So cushioning can be good. But in terms of boots that are good for that, I'd I'd say that ones that, that would have uh the adequate width in the forefoot uh for you. Yeah. Right. Um yeah, and I've seen this in the past where some people will have a neuroma symptoms and will have a you know, an ultrasound or investigation there's a neuroma there. But if they wear certain shoes, they have no problem. Okay. So, yeah. So, so what what are neuroma systems uh, symptoms? Is it just pain? Uh, pain and almost like an electric shock going through to the toes. Ooh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. So general general pain and and a clicking type feeling that goes right. through to your toes. Yeah, yeah. And they're very common. Um, okay. they can be there and you have no symptoms ever through life. Um. I think I've got one. Sometimes when I wear certain shoes, um, they'll trigger off. Um, right. Yeah. But like like any anything, um, uh, when we talk about foot health or certain conditions, I have to say that it, the, the the principles of how we address it is is to do with the correct diagnosis. So while you know it's very easy to Google, oh, I've got these symptoms. Oh, you might have a Morton's neuroma. Oh well, okay. But then it's best to get the correct diagnosis and to that then guides treatment. So um, it could be that it's not a Milton's neuroma at all. Um, and it's a bit it's a bit late to say, but I should say that, you know, what advice we're giving, I'm giving today is very general in nature and that you should always, you know, seek professional opinion um, if you're worried. Um, yeah, and, and, and that, as I said, the, that's the step. You get the right diagnosis and then that guides the treatment, yeah. Okay. But yeah, just width, I think. Width and a All bit right. of cushioning, I'd say, okay. for a neuroma. Yeah. Um, mm. So the, the issue about foot width is quite interesting because I've always measured a US 8D going towards a knee, like really at the edge of a, of a D. And usually, if I buy US boots at US 8D, they mm. do fit me quite well. But some of them, depending on the last, um, 
I will have a hot spot just about there on the outside of both feet, my right mm. more than my left. Mm. Now I'm getting a pair of boots made by Jess Wooten out of uh, oh, yeah. in, in Victoria, in Ballarat. Yeah. So he measured me up, or I measured myself up and mm. sent them to him. And, and he's, he queried back my, the ball of my foot because he said it's, mm. a, it's a bit off. It's, it, mm. That wasn't what he was expecting. So I remeasured it and he said, okay, look, you're a seven and a half, but I'm going to tailor the, the width on the insole because you are, you are a little bit wider uh, at the ball. Mm. And that's never troubled me before, but it explains why I get that hot spot, mm. I think, in that I'm really at the edge. And like, I, I never knew that because I'd never, when I had a hot spot, it was one of those Oh, it's a break-in issue. I just got to wear it and break it in. And eventually, the, the often the leather stretches. There's a couple of pairs of boots of mine that now I can't wear because after about three or four hours, I'm, I'm really hurting on that, on that outside. Mm. Um, so I think that goes to what you're saying a lot, Anthony, is that some, you just, some boots you just can't wear, I guess, they're, you know? Mm. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and um, again, getting back to that, where I was saying the differences between getting a two-dimensional width. Um, you know, if you just stand on a piece of paper and, and measure for the widest point at the forefoot, you know, that's that's the width aspect of it. But often it's volume yeah. as well. So, And yeah. that's that's very hard to, to match up. Um, yeah. And if it's inadequate, these things happen. Well, Jess got me to measure around the ball. Yeah. Whereas with, with, with the um, Brannock, as you know, it's just... Yeah, you know, a, a linear thing, you know. So mm. that was very interesting. Mm. Anyway, mm. <laughs> um, next question is from Beat Breezes. Mm. If you have pain near the ball of the foot towards the center of the foot, what mm. would you recommend as a home remedy? Oh boy, <laughs> um, I've been rolling my foot on a glass bottle with warm to moderately hot water. But any more mm. advice is welcome. I think your mm. advice might be go and see a podiatrist. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, in, in terms of recommending a home remedy, I'd, I'd say I wouldn't recommend a home remedy because, well, it's interesting that one comes up because it goes to what I was saying before about getting the diagnosis and then that guides treatment. Um, because a lot of the things that do go wrong in the feet because of the strain they take, uh, they're musculoskeletal in nature we do sometimes recommend things like like rolling or stretching or or um a hot and cold therapy and they can be very good um but but really you need to know what's going on there um and and while we were saying that the the pain from a morton's neuroma is generally in that center part of the foot or towards sometimes the most common side is in between three and four um uh, with five being the pinky and and right one being the big toe. So, uh, but around that center of the foot, you know, there's, there's probably 20 things that could be going on there. Yeah. Um, and you need to find out exactly what it is uh, yeah. to address, address it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's and, a bit, it, it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit like saying, I've got a headache. Should I take Panadol? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's, well, I mean, yeah, these are the things we weigh up amongst ourselves and, and whether you have a you know a penchant for doing more natural things, or whether you believe in orthodox medicine versus other things, it's 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 our personal choice, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But you know, um, you know, would, but, but you have you have to know you have to know what's causing the pain, don't you really? Well, yeah, they're the, that's the principles of a lot yeah. of sort of medical treatment. You know, you 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 rule out things. You know, you try and di diagnose things clinically, and if you can't do that, you might investigate a bit more. And then, yeah, you, you get the diagnosis and then that guides treatment. Mm. Yeah, right. Okay, all right. So um, one last question now. This is from Kudusol, uh, who has mm. a channel. I, I, I like this talk oh, from cool. Kudusol. Yeah. Oh, right. He's I'll got a channel on YouTube. Yeah. Mm. Um, he's got a great collection. So he says, I've got flat feet. Mm. And I saw an online exercise to build an arch. Could you please mm. ask if he thinks it's worth doing? Hmm. Well, okay. Um, well, my first response to that would be, are your flat feet a problem? Um, because some people have flat feet and they never have a problem. Whether that, you know, causes pain or tiredness uh, or just through your own choice, you want to address it. Um, 
to answer the second part of your uh, question is that yes, there are exercises that you can do to to strengthen the arch. Um, it may not look any different, but it could be a hell of a lot stronger. Absolutely, the um, there's a lot of little muscles in the foot, and if you exercise them correctly, they will get stronger because, like all our muscles, if you if you load them safely and regularly, they will get stronger. Um, so technically, it is possible. However, it will take a lot of time and a lot of commitment, and you may not actually see anything different, and you may not feel anything different. Right. That's what I'd say to that. Um, and yeah, I think I think we broached on this a little bit in the last video when we spoke last year. Tech, but, yeah, it was, but I mean, uh, well, the a surfer's foot is, you yeah. know, very strong and muscly. And as someone who does something like yoga or, or you know, um, Pilates type exercises, you know, strong posture and balance types of exercises, you know, if they do that for some years, then they can have, you know, really quite strong foot with, you know, an arch that's there. But, but you know, it, it, it may not drop as fast or it may not drop as much, but it, it I'd be surprised if you saw it sort of could become muscly, <laughs> but, but it may not actually, the arc, of, you know, the curvature may not be very profound at all. But, but yeah, uh, there, are, there are various exercises that you can do for that. And a lot of them are around isolating those muscles. So things like um, picking up towels with your toes or marbles, and things like that, okay. making, making sure the calf, muscle which isn't the foot but the calf muscles at the back of the lower leg are very strong and they're stretched ad uh, adequately um and <clears throat> yeah so so you know the muscles that control the toes are in the foot the muscles that control the foot are in the leg so you've got that one axis back um one particular exercise is like crawling with your toes along the ground so inching your foot forward on the ground when you're sitting and you okay. can just repeat repeat that, and then you can slowly load it. Uh, and I've actually seen someone develop that to the nth degree, where they've they're standing up on the ground and they can move just on toe power. Oh wow! And that's, okay. Yeah, and that that's quite quite interesting to see. It's quite a party trick, but um, it's yeah. So what I'm saying is possible, but like a lot of exercises or regimes, it takes a lot of commitment and drive and everything like that. And if you want to take that on, yeah, for sure. But in that re regime, I'd, I'd sort of say see a podiatrist or even a physiotherapist and yeah. to get the very specific exercises um, to do that. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, um, I guess it does, yeah. yeah. I just, um, flat feet, I think, uh, it's sometimes a misnomer, isn't it? Because my when I'm barefoot, mm. there isn't a huge sort of gap mm. under my arch, mm. but I'm not feeling any pain. I'm not feeling any, mm. you know, mobility mm. issues. It, mm. So it's not all flat feet are are problematic, are they? No, 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 no. Certainly no. Um, uh, and we see this a lot um, with children as they grow. Uh, often they can have a very, very flat foot, but they're incredibly active. They've you know, got great skills and physical ability and they have no symptoms at all. And so it doesn't automatically mean that flat foot equals a problem. Um, you, know, you know, that's a cohort children and there's certain populations around the world. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sort of making a generalisation here, but I'd say that, you know, most of Asia, has incredibly flat feet, yet life goes on, you know, yeah. so it's it's not, um, doesn't necessarily mean pain or anything, but I, th I think it's more getting back to what I was saying before about if the if the foot was originally did have <clears throat> the arches were well formed and everything, and then if they change um, quickly or, or, or with great force, then that means that you get damage to something that creates pain so right. um yeah um so that means that you could you, you what we work on is what we call a tissue stress model so right. the re the reason we get pain is because tissues are stressed too much and you know that if that stress conti continues things can you know bones can fracture and 
and and muscles can tear and things like that. You know, the body's very capable and it's, and it's very adaptive. So if <clears throat> if you load it slowly, it will adapt and and, and strengthen and everything, <clears throat> even bone will become more dense. They say the best thing for you know people with osteoporosis or osteopenia is is to do gentle load bearing exercise. So to load the bone, it will it will harden up. Yeah. Um. One exception with that is is where children, um, as they're going growing, so this is right from sort of walking age around 12 months through to, you know, for males probably into early 20s, girls, uh, females, late teens. I think I think if you uh, have a very flat foot or you're unstable on your feet or, or a bit more clumsy, then certainly some sort of support just to give that stable base as you're growing. Right. I think I think I, I can definitely subscribe to that. Right. So as a podiatrist, if a, a parent came to me and said, you know, he trips a lot, he 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 um he's got these flat feet, he seems very clumsy, he doesn't run as much as the other kid, he he, he um he doesn't look right and everything like that. And as he grows, I want him to have the most stable base. Right. An even base. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Right, right. Um, Anthony, you might want to add to this, but in listening to you, I'm just summarizing some of the key points, I think, is number one is if you have pain or, or issues with your foot, um, as, you know, try and get it diagnosed rather than, than trying to figure something out. Um, the second summary item to me seems to be that the, the, the boots you wear really need to suit your feet, whether it's the size or the shape or whatever. Um, don't, for goodness sakes, try to fit into uh, boots and shoes that don't fit your feet, because it, if, if it hurts, there's a reason for it. <laughs> That's a basic summary, really, isn't it, of foot health? Mm -hmm. I agree, yes. I think it's, you've, you've summarised that really well, 100%. Yeah. yeah. No, no square pegs in round holes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and despite how much we might like the look of a boot, I think if it doesn't suit you, it doesn't suit you. Absolutely, yeah. Terrific. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for that. Uh, we've had a few uh, technical issues, which the viewers won't see, I hope. <laughs> but uh, thanks for your patience and thanks for coming back. Yeah. Oh, you're most welcome, uh, Tech. I really enjoyed it. It's great to uh, catch up with you. And um, yeah, uh, I suppose also like to thank all the all the viewers on your channel and the I suppose small community of 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 uh, um, YouTubers and um, other people out there, um, personalities, celebrities. In my view, um, it's really great, uh, and I hope they're supporting you and um, keep up the good work. Uh, I hope I've answered those questions well and uh, contributed a little bit to the big picture of the boot world we all love. Thank you. Thanks very much, Anthony. And uh, you've got. Uh, some new changes coming up. You're moving houses and so on. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We we um we are. We've uh, we bought a little farm and and it's not far from where we are now. And uh, we're house sitting for a few more weeks and then we'll move across. And uh, um yeah, it's it's it won't be major. Um, fairly low stress. We can prepare for it. Having time on our hands is great, but. Uh, We've had to do a few things like buy a bit of, um, you know, a new car and um, and I'm importing a small farm vehicle from Japan and um, that's a process and a half, but thus far it's been pretty good. Uh, and getting a, getting settled in over there, yeah. So um, yeah, it's right. um it's um it's all going along nicely at this end. And, right, uh, right. Hope right. it is with you too, mate. Well, you're going to be flat out soon, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might terrific. have to buy some more boots. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, are you open to another interview maybe uh, next year again? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch and um, uh, yeah, we'll um, uh, absolutely, we'll have a chat as needed. I think the questions were really good, you know. Yeah, um, excellent. Yeah, that was, okay. it was good. I, I, good uh, yeah, go I, I, know you're, I know you're very popular, so uh, we'll, we'll try and bring this one up again next time uh, with questions and even just to catch up. It's great to catch up and see what new boots you've got. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and just have those discussions that come from it. It's really good. Um, and uh, there's other things like um, 
boot. What was the, the event in um event in America recently? Boot camp. Uh, boot camp. Yeah, yeah, that would have been um really good to get to, and maybe uh. Um, maybe we can. Yeah, maybe we can get there together one day. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. That'd be really good. I think um, Dale put up some great stuff on that, like just seeing the the, the products and the people and yeah. yeah, really interesting, really interesting. Yeah. Um, things like that in the it's it's like I said, it's a community and yeah. um, just since um, you know, going into it sort of a bit more than just having a pair of boots, one pair of that sort of boot and getting into all these brands and everything. I've spoken to two or three of my mates and they've just gone full down the rabbit hole. You know, they've just gone, <laughs> oh, that's it. You know, I've, I've ordered Grant Stones. I'm looking at Parkers, <laughs> and, you know, and and they just um, they just love it. It's, um, I suppose as guys, you know, we don't have a lot of ways to express ourselves in the fashion world. So something like a good watch or, or nice boots, you know, yep. obviously nice clothes and things like that. So, yeah. I think I think it's it, yeah a lot of guys just get really right into it again that functionality as well you know that you know built like the proverbial brick shit house and can yeah. take it all and then you know you just brush her up and she's good to go you know yeah and and yeah. I think you've just summed up the boot community <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> thank yeah, you thank you very much Anthony thank you and uh, no for worries, those of yeah. you watching out there. Obviously, that's a cue for you to like and to subscribe so that we don't miss our next interview. So thanks, Anthony, and goodbye. Okay.